The biggest difference between you and the people who you look up to are that they started and you're still thinking about it. It's one of the most frustrating things in helping entrepreneurs that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is that seeing so much potential in people, seeing so much heart and love and care, it's like you, you could be serving so much and helping so much and having such a big impact and, and we're stuck. We're stuck. And this was me too. I was stuck. It took me forever to get started. And I thought I had to have the, the perfect cameraman. My first video, if you go back and watch it on my channel, I had my friend come and film it and record it for me because I was worried about it not being perfect enough that I didn't know the gear and didn't know the microphone and the lighting and the setup. And I, I memorized the script because I didn't want to say the wrong words. I had to be perfect. Uh, most of my early videos were, were still mostly voiceover because I could write a script and have it perfect and just have B-roll and it wouldn't be me on camera afraid of making a mistake and saying the wrong things and messing up. And that's one of the main reasons why it took me so long to grow. You know, if you look at my journey of making, what, for five years, 7,000 subscribers, something like that, it was, I was stuck. I was, I was, I was too afraid to do the next thing. I was too afraid to get in the race. I was making content at least. That was one decent thing. For whatever reason, I stay consistent on, on doing stuff, but I was afraid to take the next step, the big step to go off and do it. And a lot of you are already way better than, than I was when I started. And when I'm on interviews and I'm, I'm doing uh, events and presentations and I see the audience and I see who's there and I see the skill and the, and the heart, just the, this is the thing that kills me the most. It's like the heart, it's like you want, you've got such a good heart, you want to do so much. And then there's just no action. There's no momentum because of the fear. If you could make one change this year that would really move the needle, it would be to stop judging yourself for the content that you're making or the product you're putting out or the service and just expect it to suck and keep going. So when people ask me, should I, should I do this business or this business? Should I do that business or this one? It's like, well, I don't know. You know, like at the end of the day, it's going to be what you love doing. All of them could work. Every business model can work and has worked. It's what's going to be the right one for you. And you won't know until you get out there and start doing it, right? It's like, how do you know what your favorite food is until you get out there and do it? How do you know if you like coffee or not? You know, you have to go off and you take a sip <laughs> and then you find out. You can't think your way through this. So you can't think your way. You can have some planning, but the planning won't save you. At the end of the day, you have to go off and just do something about it. And in the doing, you'll figure out what makes you come alive and keep going. So let's make it practical. Let's give, let's give you some steps for how to actually get in the race and start taking some action. Step one, understand, or at least tell yourself that great ideas flow through you. Great ideas flow through you. That because you came up with the idea, that it's a good idea. Stop judging it. Stop telling yourself you suck. Stop telling yourself someone like you can't do it. That great ideas flow through you. This is a good idea. You need to go do something about it. Right? Even just telling yourself that shortcuts the fear. Because all of the reasons in your head for why you can't do it is really just fear. If you think about making content and you're worried about the microphone and the, and the camera and the gear and all that, that's just fear talking. It's just you're afraid that it won't be good. And so you're trying to cover your bases and you come up with all these logical reasons why we can't do it. But really, it's just fear talking. So cut through the fear by telling yourself that great ideas flow through you. That you don't want to be sitting here three years later still stuck in the same spot. Right? What's the difference? Well, how much action you took over those three years. And most of us are, are stuck in inaction because we're paralyzed by fear and we've come up with rational reasons why we can't do the thing. So one, great ideas flow through you, trust them, and do something about them. Two, apply what I call the 2% difference. And so most of the time, what's the first thing we do when we come up with an idea? When you come up with an idea, you think it's a great idea, you're gonna start a channel, you're gonna write a book, you're gonna create this product, service, company, whatever. You come up with a great idea, the first thing we do is usually planning, right? Plan, 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 I need to plan. Here's what my perfect world looks like, I'm gonna plan all the way out. and. What ends up happening is you spend your best energy planning. The first step, in my opinion, should not be planning. The first step should be some kind of imperfect action. 
because what ends up happening is you get all this energy and motivation and you feel like you're unstoppable and you can do it this is such a great idea and then you start spending your time planning and researching what ends up happening is you wake up the next day and the next day and your energy and your belief starts to drop you go what was i thinking i can't do that who am i to do that the, the doubts and insecurities and the fears all start to pop in and so you you stop and nothing ends up happening besides a list of ideas and your planning and research but that doesn't that doesn't get you paid it doesn't get service out there it doesn't actually help anybody and so planning is important it just shouldn't be the first step the first step should be some kind of imperfect action just start doing something anything you you want to make a youtube channel great pull out your phone and make a video what do you see on the video it doesn't matter just speak from the heart like hey I want to start a YouTube channel. I've been thinking about doing this for a bunch of years and I've always been too afraid. And now I've decided that I'm going to go off and do it. And I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to do my best and hopefully you'll support me. All right. See you soon. <laughs> Post. There's your video. Was it great? No. But it's everything because you, you started doing something. You think about a, a fitness plan that people are going on. What do people normally do on a fitness plan? Well, you, you're researching, oh, do I do CrossFit? Do I do weights? Do I do cardio? Do I do Zumba? Do I do salsa dancing? And you're so caught up. We all get this. We all get so caught up in what the perfect plan is that we never actually do anything. Where the, the best thing you can do is go and do 10 push-ups right now, or five, or two, or <laughs> however many you can do. Are those two push-ups gonna make any difference for the long-term health? No. No, you're not building muscle from two push-ups, obviously. But the mo the act of momentum is the thing that matters because in doing the two push-ups, maybe tomorrow you do four, the next day you do six, the next day you do eight, and you're starting to build the habit of somebody who does push-ups that then can lead you to do more research to find out, oh, I was doing the push-ups all wrong. Here's a better way to do it. Oh, I should be doing this instead. You'll learn as you go. And the research and the plan is important. It just can't be the first step. So step one, again, is expect that great ideas flow through you. That that idea that came to you is good, is worthy, you should do it, you should at least try it. Step number two is 2% difference. What that means is don't plan to get to 100% for a focus on the first 2%. Most of us will plan to figure out what the 100% looks like. You won't know. What's the first 2% that you can take action on right now and just go do it? And then step three is just expect to suck at the beginning. We expect, we don't expect to be great at the start, but we expect to be good. We expect to be at least average at the start of whatever we do. And we never think it's going to be easy. I mean, some people do, I guess. But for the most part, you don't think whatever you're getting into is going to be easy. But you don't expect it to be as hard as it is. And you don't expect it to be as bad as you are at the thing. And it doesn't mean that you're bad as a human. It just means that you're bad at the skill. And so how do you get skills? Well, by, by practicing, by doing it, by training, right? And so you're going to be way worse than you thought you would be at the beginning. That's okay. You just don't have the skill yet. So I go into any new thing expecting to suck. Just completely expect to suck. Expect it to be a total failure. And if it's not, then great. And every day you get up and you do it again, you'll be a little bit better and you'll suck a little bit less because you're developing the skills. You can get really, really good at something if you have passion, energy, and you're pouring time into actually improving at it, where most people will just make one thing see how much it sucks and then never go back to it so just expect it to be terrible at the beginning don't worry so much about how much of a failure that first one was and then you keep going keep, you make another one tomorrow and another one tomorrow and another one tomorrow and you will get better if you follow that process this is this is how you actually start becoming the person who you want to be you start getting the results and the impact that you want to have you've got the heart and the talent and, and the the abilities and the care the difference is just there's no momentum or there's not enough momentum for what you're capable of. And so if you follow those three steps, right, great ideas flow through you, believe it. Follow the 2% difference instead of planning, researching, do something, you need action. And in three, expect to suck and keep going. You get that momentum you need to start changing your life. If you want another Evan Rant video that just might give you the confidence you need, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. The fastest way to change your habits is to change your environment. You ever notice how when you're in a different environment, maybe you go on vacation, maybe you go to an event or a seminar, you start doing different